stop. Did you just get home from the fish store and thought, oh, I should have got that bristle nose to keep the tank clean? Or worse still, have salesmen tried to push them onto you with the hopes of lowering your maintenance regime? Well, you better watch today's video, which is all about everything you'll need to know before you pick up a bristle nose. Let's jump straight into the video. The first thing to acknowledge immediately is that there's no such thing as this magical unicorn fish that will lower maintenance for you. Bristlenose are gonna always output more uh, waste than they're gonna consume. And in most cases, if we get things like shrimp, bristlenose and other bottom dwellers that are gonna consume waste, what we really mean is that we're gonna break it down into another sort of waste. Usually a smaller sort of waste, but with bristlenose, that is certainly not the case. So if you're brand new in the hobby and you just wanna get a bristlenose to make your tank clean and mean that you're not gonna have to do any water changes, well, I'd probably recommend maybe reconsidering the hobby because that just simply isn't the case. With that said, if you're looking to get a bristlenose because they're quirky, they're weird, they come in a variety of types and colors, well, I'd say go ahead and do it. They are actually a fantastic fish within their own right, so long as you know that they're gonna be a fish that's gonna require care, just like anything else. If that is the case, then I'm really happy to tell you that bristlenose are peaceful, easily bred, and a great member for a community tank. In fact, one of my favorite all-time trios are bristlenose guppies and cherry shrimp for a perfect tank that all three species will breed, all three will get along, and you'll have fantastic color and activity. So if that is you, let's run through some of the more targeted care requirements, or if you were one of the people that thought that bristlenose were kind of a living vacuum cleaner, and you're willing to change your mind, well, let me tell you a little bit more about them. So bristlenose are also commonly referred to as bushy nose or even sucking catfish, and that's due to their sucker mouth, which spends all day going up and down the glass, kind of like those machines that you see that clean the bottoms of your pools. I'm sure bristlenose definitely inspired those designs anyway. They originate from fast flowing areas of the Amazon where you can often find them under rocks and wood, grazing away or just holding on for dear life. A large male specimen of a bristlenose can sometimes get up to six inches or 15 centimeters. However, on average, males and females in a combined tank, they're gonna get around about four inches or 10 centimeters in length. So they're gonna need ideally a 20 gallon or up. If you're gonna breed them, I'd probably recommend more towards a 40 gallon even. In terms of water parameters, bristlenose are basically bulletproof. They're a great fish for the newcomers into the hobby. Main things that are really gonna upset a bristlenose are gonna be hot temperature, or salt. With that said, anything between 73 to 81 Fahrenheit or 23 to 27 Celsius is gonna be fine and a pH range of 5.7 to 7.8. It's also recommended often if you're gonna medicate fish when illnesses do pop up to go half strength with bristlenose as they can be a little bit sensitive to those sorts of things. As I mentioned, they're gonna be beautiful and peaceful in community tanks. So in terms of tank mates, there is a massive variety available. However, do be aware that there have been occurrences of bristlenose eating on the slime coat of more slower moving bottom dwelling fish, things like bashirs, stingrays, and things like that. So be mindful of keeping them with those kinds of fish, as well as that I'd be wary of large South American fish such as oscars, which are gonna attempt to eat the bristlenose, and at which point the bristlenose do often get stuck in those sorts of fish's mouths, and you'll end up with, unfortunately, two fish that are gonna pass away. So be mindful of things that are too big or too slow moving. In fact, if you have too many males in the tank, you can often find white uh, circular abrasions on the skin where the males have been fighting over territories. If you do find that to be the case, add in more caves, but it's quite a rare occurrence and often they'll recover quite quickly. Bristlenose also go great in planted tanks with a few exceptions. Bristlenose love to eat Amazon swords and other broad leaf plants like that. As well as that super soft and uh, fragile plants like Rotala Wallichi uh, are gonna potentially be knocked around by large bristlenose as they scuffle through the substrate. So uh, it's best to put them in planted tanks where the plants have been well established and have strong root systems in which that they can be anchored down when these big Labradors of fish bustle their way around the bottom of the substrate. In order to breed bristlenose, it's important to first understand the difference between males and females. Now bristlenose obviously is a descriptive term because the big males get sort of a beard of these 
weird alien looking tentacles at the front of their mouth. If you come across a mature male, you'll definitely know it because yes, as I mentioned, they'll look kind of like that um, bad guy out of Pirates of the Caribbean. I cannot be summoned like some mongrel pup. However, females can also get the odd bristle as well. So if it's kind of like um, a weak beard, sort of like what I was trying to grow back in my early 20s, well then it's probably a female. But if it's nice and healthy and strong and they look like they belong on the black pearl, then they're probably gonna be a male. With that, you don't need to add any sort of ratio of males to females. Just one male and one female will get the job done. So long as they have a cave with a one-way entry slash exit. Prisonos do a kind of predatory mating routine where the female will venture into the cave. The male will then trap them and force them to mate and deposit the eggs, upon which time they'll kick them out, which I guess wouldn't have a great place in humans' uh, societal construct, but it works perfectly well for Brisonos. I don't know. I think that's a bit dodgy, mate. In terms of the color morphs available, uh, you got common bristle nose, which are going to be a brownie sort of color. You've got albino bristle nose, which is kind of self-explanatory. You got super red varieties, which is uh, again a descriptive term. And you've got long fin varieties. Now, as well as that, you can have any combination of the two. So, for example, super red long fin, common long fin, albino long fin, and so forth. In terms of additions to the tank or the environment to provide, I do recommend placing in some nice bog wood something that they can munch on and, and sort of um, gr uh, rasp on, which they're gonna really enjoy. As well as that, it's gonna provide a great place for them to hide and camouflage in and feel nice and comfortable. And in terms of diet, they're omnivorous. So they will eat meat and vegetables, especially if a fish does pass away, you'll find that there'll probably be a bristlenose there having a nice easy meal. But as well as that, they like to be supplemented with zucchini, cucumber sparingly, pumpkin, I've even seen them eat watermelon and other blanched uh, leafy vegetables as well, such as spinach. So they're pretty cool that you can experiment a lot with what you want to feed them, but do kind of remove those things out of the aquarium before they become a waste issue and potentially ruin your cycle. And if you do all those things, you'll be rewarded with a really awesome, quirky looking fish that can live up to five years and become quite the horse in your aquarium at that size of up to 15 centimeters. They're going to be something that you'll forget are even in tanks sometimes until you see it going up and down the glass, hoovering away, at which point you'll remember, oh yeah, thank you, Mr. Bristlenose. I haven't had to clean that glass down for the last five years. So if you like this video and it has helped you make your decision easier when going with picking up a Bristlenose or not, then it always helps me to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. Please enjoy these fish for what they are. They are not just a living vacuum cleaner, but they're a great fish in their own right. And I think they deserve the kudos attached. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.